You're talking tunes. Tonight, several breaking stories as we come on the air. In Las Vegas, the stunning images, our reporter in a helicopter flying beside the hotel. You will see into that room and the new Everybody and chilling go. video from that night. Whoa. Also tonight, were there two other cities the gunman was looking into, Chicago and Boston? And the girlfriend, the FBI interview, and what she's now saying. And ABC News obtaining this check, their purchase in the weeks before. A state of emergency declared tonight in New Orleans, preparing for a possible hurricane. The deadly storm already, the paths then having it traveling right up to the northeast. Breaking now, the Republican congressman caught up in a sex scandal. He has just given his two weeks notice. The NFL star under fire tonight, responding to a female reporter, telling her it's funny to hear a female talk about routes. And the man behind some of the biggest movies of our time, and tonight, his very public apology to the women he's worked with. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. And we begin tonight with major new developments in the Las Vegas massacre. We are learning the killer may have scouted other potential targets in Chicago and in Boston. And the dramatic new video from that night. Run! Keep your head down! Go! Keep your head Just down, after go. the gunfire began, you can hear the officers telling the thousands to run for their lives, helping the victims who'd been shot and who had fallen. And tonight, our team flying beside the hotel and over the massive crime scene, where the FBI is still carefully combing through the evidence. ABC senior national correspondent Matt Gutman leading us off again tonight. We boarded a helicopter here in Las Vegas for the first look tonight into Stephen Paddock's sniper's nest high above the Las Vegas Strip at the gilded facade of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Inside one shattered window, pillows stacked high on a stripped bed. The other window partially blocked by plywood, but inside, investigators carefully dissecting the scene. Down below you can see FBI agents picking through every single piece of debris down there on the fairgrounds floor. They don't want to miss anything, a single bullet fragment or a single piece of evidence. This is the aftermath. <laughs> But tonight, new video gives new insight into the chaos on the ground. That gunfire triggering hysteria, confusion. Shockingly, people seem unable to process what's happening. Run, hold their stock! Run, don't walk! Police officers yelling at them that they're under attack. Everybody go! Right there, there's a woman on the ground as the crowds run past her. Let's go. Get, get up. up. Run. Go. Get up. Let's go. Get up. Get up on your feet. On your feet. Let's go. I'm on with you. Sister, help me. Help on your me. feet. Here. Thank you. Get up. That video shot by Ray Page went to get his truck parked nearby, driving it back into the kill zone, turning it into a makeshift ambulance. Right here. Come in here. The wounded loaded in one after another. Let's get in the truck. Get in the truck. Do we have any other wounded people do you take? Not right now. Ray then jumps behind the wheel, drives them back down the strip to paramedics. I got five wounded. Please, I'm bleeding so much. Today, from high above, evidence of a massacre still frozen in time. It doesn't look so much like there was a concert there, but that a tornado swept through there. Uh, those overturned lawn chairs, we've seen strollers there, we've seen walkers there. Evidence of just the absolute chaos. And tonight, we are learning that Stephen Paddock may have scouted other targets as far away as Boston and Chicago. According to sources briefed on the investigation, he booked rooms at Chicago's Blackstone Hotel in August, the same dates as the Lollapalooza Festival right across the street in Grant Park. About 100,000 people attended each day, but Paddock never checked in. Law enforcement sources also tell us his phone shows a Google search for hotels around Fenway Park in Boston. That ballpark's capacity? Nearly 38,000 people. But no evidence he traveled to Boston either. Instead, he stayed close to home, holing up in one of the casinos he knew so well, looking down on that helpless crowd. So let's get to Matt Gutman live with us again tonight. And Matt, now you're learning there might be someone else authorities want to talk to. 
That's right, David. Investigators say that Paddock was seen with a mystery woman in his last days. Now, she was not his girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley. They're trying to find out who she is and what she knows. Also, given the arsenal that he amassed, along with explosive materials and the fact that he may have had an escape plan, they're now saying that they cannot rule out that he had an accomplice. David. Matt Gutman leading us off. Matt, thank you. The other major headline involves the girlfriend, now questioned by the FBI back here in the U.S. What Marilu Danley says when asked if she knew anything. And tonight, ABC News obtaining a check. What they paid cash for in the weeks before and how the salesperson described the couple. Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. New insights tonight from an unlikely place about Stephen Paddock. The Reno car dealership where he bought this car on August 1st, paying cash with a check for $14,411. Not a sign of someone with financial problems. Employees here today told us the FBI questioned them about exactly what happened with Paddock and his girlfriend Mary Lou Denley when they came to buy the car. Mary Lou even wanted to get a Lexus, but he was like, I'm not going to spend $10,000 more for a car that's got the exact same equipment. And when Danley went on a test drive, she told the female salesperson that Paddock had saved her from a troubled marriage. She said she had a, a bad relationship prior to him and how he had, you know, turned her life around and really helped her out. Danley's relationship with Paddock has now become a key focus of the investigation. On Wednesday, she told FBI agents Paddock was a caring man who showed no sign of violence. And the FBI also wanted to know about the more than $100,000 that Paddock wired to the Philippines for Danley before sending her there just two weeks in advance of the shooting. Her lawyer read her statement. I was grateful, but honestly, I was worried that first, the unexpected trip home and then the money was a way of breaking up with me. Four days into the investigation, the FBI says it has ruled out money problems and ruled out any connection to anarchist groups, to anti-government groups, to overseas terror groups. And Brian Ross with us live tonight. Four days later, still no motive, but as you began to point out right there, you have learned tonight what they have begun to rule out. That's right. They're still stumped, though, and they're certain they'll find a motive sooner or later, drilling down further now on his finances, his computer, and his mental health, David. But one thing, Brian, so many people are asking about is this belief that he didn't snap in the moment because there's so many signs now that he had been preparing this for some time. Exactly. This was a well-planned attack. Nearly two dozen weapons in his hotel suite, half of them converted to be fully automatic, as well as those cameras, including the one in that room service cart outside his room, placed to give him early warning about anyone coming to stop him, David. But still trying to figure out that motive. Brian Ross tonight, thank you. After the massacre took 58 lives, could there be bipartisan movement now on this in Washington? The growing call tonight to ban or regulate those so-called bump stocks, the device used by the gunman attaching it to some of his weapons, turning semi-automatic weapons to fire like an automatic. Democrats, some Republicans, and a signal today from the NRA on this? Here's ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega. From the nation's most powerful gun lobby today, a call for change in the wake of the nation's deadliest mass shooting. Found on a dozen of the Las Vegas shooters' weapons, those bump stock attachments that allow a rifle to fire like a machine gun. The NRA now says devices designed to allow semi-automatic rifles to function like fully automatic rifles should be subject to additional regulations. And tonight, a growing number of top Republicans say they would consider legislation banning bump stocks altogether. If this is a modification to a firearm that breaches the spirit of the law against automatic weapons, and I think there'd be bipartisan support to deal with it. Clearly, that's something we need to look into. One Florida Republican congressman even vowing to introduce his own bill. With the bump stock, assault rifles can fire hundreds of rounds per minute, changing a gun from this to this. But not all Republicans are on board with tougher laws. I, I don't think that... Uh, the 80 or 90 million Americans who exercise their Second Amendment rights to, uh, to own a gun should be punished for the act of one evil person. The White House so far silent on gun control in the wake of the Las Vegas massacre, but late today, President Trump signaled he'll be weighing in on the bump stock debate, too. We'll be looking into that over the next short period. Of time. All right, Cecilia Vega with us live from the White House. The president there saying he will look into what can be done on these bump stocks. In the meantime, Cecilia, I want to ask you about another report breaking tonight 
involving the White House Chief of Staff, reports in Politico that John Kelly's phone might have been compromised. Yeah, David, this report says that General Kelly's personal cell phone was compromised. No indication of how or by whom or even whether any data uh, may have been accessed. The White House tonight tells us that the general's phone uh, stopped working in December, so he stopped using it then. This is before he even joined this administration. But, David, definitely raising questions about whether any sensitive info may have been uh, accessed. All right, Cecilia Vega with us again tonight. Cecilia, thanks as always. And we should mention back on the Las Vegas massacre that ABC News in 2020 will air a special documentary presentation tomorrow night with new first-person accounts and video on the heroism amid the tragedy. What happened in Vegas airs tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you then. We hope you watch or set your DVR. That's tomorrow night. In the meantime, overseas tonight in the deadly ambush targeting American troops in Niger, the Pentagon confirming three Army Green Berets killed and two wounded during an attack by about 50 extremists near the Mali border. They were on a joint patrol at the time, the Americans part of a team assisting a counter-terror operation there. Back here at home tonight and Louisiana and Florida declaring states of emergency tonight, preparing for a possible hurricane headed straight for the U.S. The massive tropical storm, Nate, already blamed for more than a dozen deaths in Nicaragua and Costa Rica as it makes its way toward the Gulf tonight. The paths then take it right up through the country, right into the northeast. So let's get right to Rob because hurricane season is not over yet. Yeah, David, and unlike the other storms, this one's going to be moving quickly. Right now it's over land over Honduras, and once it gets into the Caribbean later on tonight, look out, water there, very warm. We've got hurricane watches now that are posted for Cancun, so it goes across the Yucatan tomorrow night, dead into the Gulf of Mexico, intensifying it does as it does. So how strong? We're not quite sure because it'll be moving so quickly, but at least a Category 1 into or around New Orleans or the Central Gulf Coast early Sunday morning. There are these spaghetti model tracks, more confidence there, and look at the warm waters, David. Mid 80s, that as you know, is fuel for hurricanes. All right, on the watch in the Gulf tonight, Rob, thank you. Next this evening, the breaking headline involving a Republican congressman and his sex scandal. Tim Murphy of Pennsylvania, a husband and father, giving us two weeks' notice today. Here's ABC's David Wright. Tonight, this Pennsylvania Republican caught in a sex scandal, Congressman Tim Murphy effectively gave two weeks' notice. He's out of Congress, effective October 21st. I think it's appropriate that he um, moves on to the next chapter of his life. Congressman Murphy is known for his anti-abortion views. I don't know if women who go in for abortion really know what happens. But this week, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette published text messages between him and his former mistress, making it clear that while he's against abortion, he wanted her to have one. In January, she took him to task for posting your pro-life stance all over the place when you had no issue asking me to abort our unborn child just last week. He texted back, expressing remorse. Turns out, it was a false alarm. But the affair became public as a result of her divorce proceedings, much to the congressman's embarrassment. The congressman is married, too. He says he'll take some personal time to get help as he and his family sort out their difficulties. David? David, thank you. And one more headline out of Washington tonight. Attorney General Jeff Sessions today reversing an Obama-era policy saying federal civil rights laws do not protect transgender people from discrimination in the workplace. Sessions suggesting discrimination based on sex does not include issues of gender identity. We turn tonight to football star igniting a new outrage this evening. Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton under fire, accused of making sexist remarks to a female reporter. At least one sponsor already cutting ties. And here's ABC's Paula Ferris now. The fallout for Cam Newton has been swift. New Dannon Oikos Triple Zero is my go-to protein snack. Dannon, the maker of Oikos, pulling all of Newton's ads and Gatorade calling his comments disrespectful to all women. It's all because of this exchange with a female reporter. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes. It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. That reporter, 25-year-old Jordan Rodriguez, shot back on Twitter. I don't think it's funny to be a female and talk about routes. I think it's my job. But Rodriguez also in hot water, apologizing for years-old offensive tweets that surfaced this week. Rodriguez was back at Panthers practice today, but not commenting. The team, quiet as well. But the NFL, with nearly half its fan base now consisting of women, saying the comments are just plain wrong and disrespectful. If you look at everything that has added up, the domestic violence issues, the national anthem controversy, they're having some trouble with ratings. 
Ryan, ratings are a big concern for the...